Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to version 2 of CUDA Crash Course. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about unified memory. So in the previous examples for, say, vector addition, we talked first about using, you know, just normal mem copies with CUDA mem copy. You know, a way that we can directly say, you know, put this data on the GPU or copy it back from the GPU. Then we looked a little bit at pinned memory, which is a way that we can speed up our transfers by allocating using CUDA malloc host and basically allocating a pinned region of memory that would speed up our mem copies. But there's really a third type of these memory operations that we can perform um, and we can write our programs with, uh, which is this unified memory. Now, unified memory is a way that we can greatly simplify right, this transfer and movement of data by basically just you know, offloading that work to the runtime and the driver. So instead of manually copying our data over, we're going to go ahead and rely on you know, when the runtime detects that it's accessing this data, it's going to rely on basically automatically paging the data you know, over to the GPU or back over to the CPU. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at a baseline example here. and We can show how it will greatly simplify our code. So first we'll look at this vector add um baseline.cu. And it's important to note that unified memory is not supported on all GPUs, as well as some of the different features of unified memory like prefetching and some of the more complicated features um, like these uh, hints that we'll look at in a little bit are also uh, not available on all architectures. So here we see, um, just like with our CUDA malloc host, we don't really need to change our kernel at all. It stays exactly the same. All we're really changing is how we're moving around the data. So if we go to our main function, you see we've replaced our CUDA malloc host or our just you know CUDA malloc uh, or normal CUDA malloc with a single CUDA malloc managed. So now we have one set of pointers to worry about instead of two. Instead of having our pointers or maybe our vectors that we've got our host data in, now our host data and our device data is just one set of pointers that will be A, B, and C. So then we go ahead and call CUDA malloc manage and it can just treat these like normal integer pointers. So I can go ahead and initialize them using you know, rand, so rand mod 100, random number between 0 and 99 inclusive. Then I just set up my block size and grid size, call my kernel, and I don't need to worry about copying the data over. When the GPU tries to access the data, it'll cause a page fault, and then you know, the, you know, the memory will start streaming over to the GPU. So one thing I should note is that we need this CUDA device synchronize in here. And the reason why we need this CUDA device synchronized is because our kernel launches are asynchronous. And because we're not directly doing a CUDA mem copy, which is a synchronous operation, we need to go ahead and make sure that our main function or uh, our main function doesn't exit um, or try to access the data and try to you know maybe bring it back from the GPU, you know before it's done, right? So we call CUDA device synchronized, and this just says wait for all the previous operations on the GPU to complete before continuing. So we're just going to wait until our result is done before we start doing our functional test. And our functional test here, again, we don't need to do a CUDA mem copy back to the CPU. We just check if the result C array is equal to A plus B, all of which would normally, you know, or at least C, would still be on the GPU. And then finally, we have CUDA free down here. So just like with our things that we allocate with CUDA malloc, we can go ahead and just free it using CUDA free. Okay, so let's go ahead and you know try this out, and we'll go ahead and compile um, our example. So with NVCC um, vector add um baseline, right, and we'll call the output say base. So the first thing we can do is let's just profile it um, using something like nvprof. So we'll just do nvprof dot slash base, right, and you'll see we'll get a new uh, a new a new little table down here, and it's all about this unified memory profiling. So it'll tell me, uh, you know, the number of transfers host to device it did, the number of transfers device to host it did, you know, the total time it took, and then the number of GPU page fault groups. So like I said, you know, we're basically paging data back and forth from the CPU uh, to the GPU and from the GPU to the CPU. So we can actually get a timeline of this that we've seen before um, using nvprof dash dash print dash GPU dash trace. And so we can see if I go ahead and call base, and we'll zoom out a bit just to make things a little more clear, you see I have a whole bunch of events here now. So I've got some unified memory CPU page faults. So at the very beginning when I'm trying to initialize my data, it looks like I've got some page faults. My actual kernel itself, so here's when I call my kernel. And then you see I've got you know unified memory GPU page faults. So the data doesn't know it needs to be on the GPU yet. It figures it out when the GPU tries to access the data after the kernel launch, 
and then it starts streaming over our um, our input arrays, right? Until finally, um, we see down here we have unified memory CPU page fault. So this is when we're doing our functional tests. So after our CUDA device synchronize, and uh, it goes ahead and starts copying the data back. So it starts streaming it back through a bunch of CPU page faults, right? Until our application finally finishes. So you see all of the you know all of the complication of having to you know orchestrate uh, the data movement. It completely goes away. We're just offloading it to the driver. Um, and runtime. So one thing you might ask here, or you might ask yourself is, well, isn't this going to come at a huge cost, right? And the answer is it can, right? It can come at a pretty hefty cost, but there's a lot of ways that we can get around this. So the ways we get around this are through hints about prefetching and these mim advise hints um, for Pascal and later architectures. So if I go ahead and uh, we go ahead and look here, you see that there are a couple articles that I'll link below about maximizing unified memory performance in CUDA. And it gives some different examples here. Um, so this one talks about you know, our different ways that we can allocate memory through uh, malloc host, malloc, and also using malloc manage. But it also talks about this CUDA mem prefetch async. So if we know the data should be on the CPU, or if we know the data should be on the GPU, we can give a hint to basically say, okay, well, in the background, start go ahead, start going ahead and bring the data back over, or bring the data over to the GPU in order to improve performance. But then there's even you know greater optimizations that are available through this um, uh, this unified memory on Pascal and later, and so it starts talking about these new qualifiers that we have. So we'll go ahead and go down here. Um, and you, you can see that there's a number of new options that we have. So there's these CUDA mim advive set read mostly, um, and these other memory usage hints that we can give more than just doing prefetching. Uh, and so, you know, I started playing around with this and seeing, you know, maybe what is going to be the performance difference between, uh, say, the baseline where we don't give any hints to um, a use case where, you know, we give it a whole lot of hints and we try to get rid of all of the overhead of unified memory. So I'll go ahead and pull that example, and we'll cover it in greater detail in later videos because it's a more advanced topic. Let's go ahead and get rid of base. Um, actually, let's recompile and get base back, but let's just open up vector add prefetch. So we're gonna compare the two. So um, the allocation is gonna stay the same, but I'm gonna start giving a whole bunch of advisory hints. So I'm gonna say where the data should be, say at the very beginning. So I'm gonna say it should be at CUDA CPU device ID. Now this is just a built-in variable. I believe it's just a macro. Um, it's just a macro, and this is just going to be whatever your CPU is. Um, so you just give it CUDA CPU device ID. You don't need to define it anywhere. Um, and then if you want to pass something or pass a hint, say the direction being to the GPU, you can just call CUDA get device ID. And this will just be for your device GPU. And there's API calls if you say have multiple GPUs. Um, so you can set those with CUDA set device. So here, what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and saying that A and B should be on the CPU at the very beginning. Uh, that way I don't have any startup page faults. And then I'm saying that pre start prefetching C to the GPU. So I wanna make sure that C gets onto the GPU first, um, just because I'm not going to initialize it at all on the CPU side. Then after I go ahead and write all my input data, I'm gonna go ahead and set these CUDA mim advise, CUDA mim advise set read mostly. So I really only want read-only copies to go on the GPU. And the reason why is because, you know, by default, uh, what will end up happening if we try to access the data on the uh, CPU again after it's been moved to the GPU, it's going to wait to invalidate, say, the GPU's version. And then same thing goes trying to get it to the uh, GPU. It's going to invalidate the CPU version. And we really don't care for read-only data. So we can avoid those invalidations by setting it as read mostly. And then we can also start prefetching it over to the GPU while we're doing, say, our grid size calculations. So then finally, um, after a kernel, we just prefetch everything back, and then we go ahead and uh, we go ahead and copy the data or do our functional test rather. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. So I'll exit out of there. I'll go ahead and compile the prefetch version. So let's do nvprof on this time. Let's do it on prefetch. So let's zoom out a little bit just to get a little bit nicer of a picture. Um, so we can see that, you know, let's go ahead and run it one more time. Suddenly I have way fewer, say, page faults, and uh, it's going to look like a, a whole lot nicer than the original. So let's go ahead and do the baseline again just by comparison or to compare. So you see with the uh, baseline version, whole bunch of page faults. 
um, going to end up eating up a whole lot of time versus the kind of more optimized version where we give a whole bunch of hints. It's going to end up looking like we just had you know normal CUDA mem copies in here. And we can see this if we just use our normal nvprof output. So if I do nvprof dot slash base, and then I do nvprof dot slash prefetch, and we just look at some of the times. So here it looks like my vector add kernel took about 400 and something uh, microseconds versus my other vector add kernel taking 11 microseconds. And the reason for that is because my top kernel is waiting on all of, the, all of these page faults while it's trying to access data. Um, we also see down here um, in the, the uh, profiling results for the unified memory, you know, we have 22 transfers host to device, 18 transfers device to host, six uh, GPU page fault groups for the, um, for the baseline version. But the unified memory one had two host to device transfers and one device to host transfer with only two page faults, uh, CPU total, or only CPU page faults. So basically what ended up happening is that now it just looks like normal CUDA mem copy. So it does look more complicated, but the thing is that this unified memory is extraordinarily helpful uh, when we start doing things, much more complicated applications. Um, you know, and we can always try to regain some performance or get even better performance using uh, using all of these hints that we have available to us. But the fact is there you know, comes a time where all of this data orchestration becomes you know, way too complicated for you know, a programmer to say manage, so we really want support like this from the driver and runtime. Uh, but that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can check out all this code at github.com slash coffee before arch, so it's under the CUDA programming, then under um, vector add, and then unified memory. You can find both of these examples, so feel free to download them, play around with them. Let me know if you have any questions, and as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.